think you know 80s teen idol Debbie Gibson? Probably not as well as she knows Gatoroids. This pop star's life is more unusual than you'd expect. Debbie Gibson released her first three studio albums back when she was an MTV favorite. But fans have had to wait a little longer in between her albums since then. After 2003's Colored Lights, the Broadway album, Gibson took seven years to release Miss Vocalist, and it was another 11 years by the time her 10th LP, The Body Remembers, finally hit the shelves in 2021. The record was something of a throwback. It included a reworking of her hit, alongside another late 80s pinup, Joey McIntyre, from New Kids on the Block. Speaking to Billboard magazine, Gibson described the record as Electric Youth 2021, referencing her chart-topping 1989 sophomore album. She said, The variety of styles, the way it encapsulates my life right now. The goal was to make an undeniably special, authentic, well-crafted, and yet still raw album. And the general public appeared to agree. Her single, Girls' Night Out, became Gibson's first top five hit on the Billboard Dance Club Songs chart in over 30 years. The Houston Chronicle named The Body Remembers as one of its top 10 albums of the year, remarking, Gibson embraces adulthood, but acknowledges the fizzy pop that made her a teen star. What do Patti LaBelle, Leanne Rimes, and Billy Ray Cyrus all have in common with Debbie Gibson? Well, apart from topping various Billboard charts, it turns out they are all musicians who have entered the picture-perfect world of the Hallmark Channel TV movie. Whether she's that girl from Party of Five or he's that guy from Desperate Housewives, you'll be asking, wait, how do I know that actor? Gibson has graced three Hallmark movies to date, but it's fair to say that her roles haven't exactly been a major stretch. In 2015's The Music In Me, Gibson plays a singer-songwriter forced to move back home, where she falls in love with a handsome stranger. A year later, she starred in Summer of Dreams as a former pop idol forced to move back home where she falls in love with a handsome stranger. And as its title suggests, 2018's Wedding of Dreams was a sequel in which Gibson plays a music teacher who walks down the aisle with said handsome stranger. When asked by Smashing Interviews what first attracted her to the Hallmark Channel, Gibson replied, I like to do projects that are custom tailored to my personality and to me. They really incorporated that into the story, which was a dream. She followed her dream. She never gave up. Debbie Gibson is no stranger to busting a move. After all, she was choreographed by none other than Paula Abdul in the video for Shake Your Love. So you might have expected the former teen idol to have waltzed her way to the finals of the 25th season of Dancing with the Stars in 2016. But as several former pop stars have quickly discovered, ballroom dancing is very different than dancing on MTV. Gibson was eliminated along with professional partner Alan Burstyn in week two of the hit ABC competition. Unfortunately, they failed to impress the judges with their tango routine set to the song Havana by Camila Cabello. While speaking to Good Morning America after her exit, Gibson explained how much she'd enjoyed her journey on Dancing with the Stars. I've been through some health challenges in the past few years, and I wasn't getting better in my house, laying on the couch and going to practitioners. Debbie Gibson first appeared as a talent show judge on the American Idol spinoff, American Juniors. After that, she took a similar role on the celebrity singing show, Sing Your Face Off. Then, in 2009, the star once again signed up to be a judge on a Nickelodeon competition series hosted by Nick Lachey, called America's Most Musical Family. The one-season wonder of a show aimed to discover great talents like the next Jackson 5 or the Partridge Family, alongside fellow singer Sierra and internet personality David Dobrik. Gibson was integral to whittling the 30 musical clans down to one. The Melissa's Way brothers eventually emerged victorious. And it wasn't just the ability to hold a note, either. Referring to the victors in a pre-air interview with Hollywood Life, Gibson remarked, I also love kind human beings. And so when I see a mix also of the talent, the tenacity, the connection to the audience, but then, like you get kind people in the family, I go, okay, I'm in. Kindness gets you very far in this business, too. It's a tale as old as time. Squeaky clean teen becomes a massive star, faces the pressures of fame and a relentless schedule, 
starts using drugs and alcohol, and in Debbie Gibson's case, then goes on Oprah to come clean. In 2016, the electric youth singer made headlines during an appearance on Oprah, Where Are They Now?, in which she shared that she misused Tylenol PM and Xanax earlier in her career. The death of a musical legend had inspired her to dig into her experiences with Oprah Winfrey. Gibson explained, When I heard the news about Prince and the fact that it might have been prescription drug-related, I really had a moment of, that's awful and that's sad. And I can relate. And unfortunately, 90% of the entertainment community can relate. Gibson eventually recognized she needed to make a change. As she said in a 2021 interview with The Guardian, you can medicate and mask, but eventually you have to stop, or you will die. Gibson has also opened up about her struggles with alcohol use. She explained in a piece written for Retreat Behavioral Health, For more than 20 years, I was addicted to alcohol. Take it from me, when you're living with substance abuse, your life isn't a continuous high note. So you find yourself self-medicating, and it's really unhealthy. You might be surprised to learn that Debbie Gibson has never made it down the aisle. She was once engaged to music executive Jonathan Canterman, but the pair called things off before any wedding bells chimed. And despite spending more than a decade together, her relationship with Rutledge Taylor was strictly girlfriend-boyfriend until they went their separate ways in 2019. But despite believing that she'd be married with kids by the time she turned 45, Gibson has no regrets. In 2021, she told People magazine, Here I am at 50. I'm solo, I'm loving it, and I don't feel incomplete. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. If I do meet someone, what a great place to be in to not be looking to someone to complete me in any way. Of course, any potential Mr. Gibsons might have to hold off for a while before they're allowed to make an honest woman out of the only In My Dreams singer. Her pride and joy dachshunds, Trooper, Levi, and Joey are hugely protective of their owner. She joked, I think I'm going to have to wait to date till I'm 65 because my dogs will not let anybody near me. They're like, that's our mom, paws off. In 2013, Debbie Gibson started experiencing everything from migraines and night sweats to back pain and constant fatigue. After a nine-month quest to discover the cause, the former teen idol was finally told by doctors that she had Lyme disease, a bacterial infection, which reportedly affects nearly half a million people every year in the United States alone. Unfortunately, by this point, the condition had already hit Gibson's neurological system a development which the Rock of Ages star told people she's still dealing with today. I've come to a place where I've learned to expect the unexpected with my health, but I know I can get through it. And every time I get through it, I'm reminded of how strong we all are. Gibson has also become less hard on herself when she takes the stage. As she said to Parade in 2019, I no longer set out with expectations of being perfect which has been the healthiest shift. Those may sound like battling words, but make sure you don't say battle in Gibson's presence. In an interview with People, she said, I've taken that word out of my vocabulary. For me, it's about being zen and open, listening for answers, and yes, being a warrior, but a peaceful warrior, and moving through things. Fans of late 80s chart music got at least five classic acts for the price of one when they booked tickets for the 2019 New Kids on the Block mixtape tour. Alongside the Hangin' Tough boy band themselves, the bill also included the likes of hip-hop pioneers, Salt and Peppa, Naughty by Nature, and former teen pop princess Tiffany and Debbie Gibson. All of Debbie Gibson's tour buddies collaborated with New Kids on the Block on their nostalgia-heavy track, 80s Baby. Gibson told Forbes she enjoyed the experience of playing in front of such big crowds again. I had 15 minutes of stage time on a tour, so it wasn't my tour, but I got to feel all the feels of people singing my early hits in an arena and I had a tour bus. In another interview with E.T., The New Yorker revealed that she was particularly happy to be joining forces with the Knight Cousins, who worked with her on her 2006 single, Say Goodbye, Gibson said. The guys are just great. It feels like a reunion of people who did the same thing at the same time. So it's easy energy, professional and grown up, but fun. Reunited and it feels so good. Oh. oh. It's all you get. You might not know that Debbie Gibson's first brush with the showbiz world came as an actor. She made uncredited appearances in the classic comedy Ghostbusters, as well as the less classic comedy Sweet Liberty. 
Later, the multi-talent performer resumed her big screen career with leading roles in My Girlfriend's Boyfriend and My Ex-Girlfriend's Wedding Reception. However, Gibson's more recent film career choices have been restricted to so bad they're good sci-fi originals. In 2009, Gibson took billing as oceanographer Emma McNeil in the franchise starter Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus. She then played animal activist Dr. Nikki Riley in Mega Python vs. Gatoroid two years later, with fellow teen pop princess Tiffany also in the cast. Later, she completed her trilogy of trashy B movies in 2014, with perhaps the most ridiculous of them all. Mega Shark vs. Mecha Shark. In a chat with Stereo Gum, Gibson shared that she didn't have to think twice about being a part of such outlandish fare, saying, I think there's a balance between taking yourself seriously and not taking yourself seriously. The Class is a new film that has been hailed by producers as a follow-up to The Breakfast Club, the classic coming-of-age drama which put most of its teen cast on the Hollywood map. In 1985, Anthony Michael Hall continued his rise to fame by playing a student in the John Hughes original. But now, in a table-turning role, Hall will be the assistant principal this time around. So where does this leave Debbie Gibson? Naturally, she is cast as part of the school's fine arts department, but her role doesn't quite meet expectations. The pop music icon isn't head of the music department, but rather the drama teacher, as she plays it well. In an interview, Hall told Screen Rant that he was impressed by Gibson's performance, saying she was a total pro, prepared, completely natural, believable, and also very likable in the film. There's something big out there. In 2022, Debbie Gibson played the unlikely role of fixer-upper on Secret Celebrity Renovation. The former teen pop princess proved to be surprisingly adept at smashing countertops on the show as she helped transform the home of her manager, Heather Moore. In an interview, Gibson told Newsday, I'd never swung a sledgehammer in my life until this. It definitely hurt my wrist and my arm a little, but I actually kept some pieces of her old countertops as souvenirs. I'll stick to singing, thank you. The Long Island native also revealed why she chose to give her manager the DIY treatment, referring to her Lyme disease diagnosis. Gibson said, She stuck with me through a particularly daunting health chapter. I kept saying to her, Why haven't you left me? You didn't sign on for all of this. Debbie Gibson made headlines in 2021 when she celebrated her 51st birthday by posting a photo of herself in a revealing black bikini. But as the Lost in Your Eyes singer explained in the caption, the picture wasn't meant to titillate but rather a visual representation of a new life chapter that she was embracing with open arms. She wrote, Once you announce to the universe that you are open to receive, it may take a moment, a year, or a decade, but you will eventually reclaim your freedom that's there inside you. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact the National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.